Hi folks. So we're going to talk about unit testing here. So what we did so far is we tested our code, but it all relied on me knowing what I expected to come out and actually eyeballing it and saying, okay, did I get the value I expected? Right? If I started at 30, did I get 30? And then if I added 5, did I go up to 35? If I took away 10, did I go down to 25? If I tried to add 100, I should stop at 40. If I tried to take away 100, I should stop at 20. So we tested it, but we had to do it all by hand. And turns out humans are really bad at this sort of thing, right? If you ever tried to proofread your own English paper, you're awful at it. Let's just be honest, because you know what you're expecting. So you are. it's easy for you to glance over simple mistakes. So what we're going to look at is how we can make the computer do these tests for us, which is fantastic. So I'm going to come to the chair class here, and I'm just going to right click on it. And I'm going to say, I want to go to test. Now, most IDEs will have something like this for you. So if you're, if you're using a different IDE, you'll have a similar option here. And it'll say, hey, we don't have any tests. Do you want to make some new ones? You say, yes, please. Yes, let's make some tests. Um, yep, yeah, sure. And now it's saying, what do you want to test here? So the class name is chair test. Perfectly fine here. No worries. And then we want to, you can t check the boxes for which methods you want to test. Now, what I like to do here is I test the constructor and all of the gets all at once. So I'm going to make an instance of the object and make sure all the values match, kind of like we did with the printing here. And then I'm going to test any of the set ones separately. So I'm going to test the adjust chair height for sure. I'm going to test the set has arms for sure. And the has arms we don't need to because it's really, it's essentially the get as well. Any other gets we don't need. So just those couple boxes and we should be in pretty good shape here. Uh, let's see. Oh, why does it not like it here? Uh, so if we click this, add JUnit, no, we don't want that one. We want to add JUnit 5 to the class path here. That ought to take care of it for us. And it should go want to, want to go and download this for us. Should be able to do that okay. Just a, a couple small annoying things here. There we go. We got some tests. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. It didn't put it in a separate folder here. That's not great for us, but that's okay. We can always worry about that later. So now we get a couple methods. We have a chair test class, and you notice it imports this or JUnit Jupyter API assertions here. And then we have a method here for set has arms and a method for adjust chair height. So I'm going to add in another one. And it has this at notation at the top. It's saying, hey, this thing is a test. So the first thing I'm going to do is add one more. Just copy paste. And this is my, I'll call this test constructor and gets here. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow this AAA format or convention here. It's not a rule here, um, but it's a nice way of laying out tests. So we're going to arrange, then we're going to act, and then we're going to assert. So arrange says, give me all of the things that you need before you test. Act says, okay, actually call the code you're testing. And then assert says, did I get what I expect? This is set up the variables we need to test. Act is call the code we are testing and then assert is did we get we get what we expected right sort of just like we did over in our main method here but we'll set it all up here so i'll have a string for expected color uh, we'll say is black and then i'll have a boolean for um, has arms we'll say is true and then we will have a uh, int for current height in centimeters uh, is 30 and then an int for this I'm sorry this is the expected current height so these are all the values I expect so oh, I'll add that in here so expected has arms sure why not and expected current height uh, expected minimum height and an expected maximum height maximum height so we said min was 20 max was 40 so I have all the attributes that I need ready to go. Then the code that I'm testing here is the constructor. So I'm going to say chair chair equals a new chair, given the expected color, given the expected has arms, given the uh, current height, the expected current height, given the min, and given the max. So it's a little bit long here, so we bump that down a little bit, uh, so it's a little easier to see on the eyes here. How's that? Is that not too bad? So we'll call the constructor. That's the code we're testing. Then get the values out. And get the values. So then we'll have a string for the actual color. Here then is my chair.getColor. What color does the chair think it is now? 
again, it's kind of boring to test the get methods, but it's a, it's a nice habit to get into to make sure we're giving values back that we expect. Um, and then we'll have a boolean for actual has arms is going to be my chair dot has arms. Uh, not a boolean, a boolean, there we go. And then an int for the actual current height in centimeters. Centimeters is my chair dot get height in centimeters. Right, and I'm just going to copy paste this one here, and you know it'll probably be okay. We'll have an actual minimum and an actual maximum here. So chair dot get minimum and chair dot get maximum. Again, type a couple letters, and tab will auto complete it for you. So we're going to call the code and then get the values out. Then we're going to assert. Did we get what we expected? So we say assert equals here, and then you give it what you expected and what you actually got. So we'll have the expected color and we'll have the actual color. So it's gonna test the computer then we'll check, did the color that we expect match the actual color here? Now for the um, expect that has arms, you could do the same thing, assert equals, or you could also, if you wanted to say assert true, that it actually has arms is true, um, either way is okay. But we'll follow this pattern here and this is okay. So expect that has arms and actual has arms, great. And then we'll assert equals my actual current, or my expected current height and the actual current height, great. And then we'll just, again, copy paste and change those uh, to mins and maxes here. So I'll take my actual min, my actual max. This is my expected min and my expected max. There we go, okay? So the computer then will go and do that checking for us. So there's no output happening here. We're just checking if I call the constructor and pass it values, do I get back the values that I'm expecting to get back out? And then to run your test, you can right click and say run test. And what's super cool is you'll get a nice pretty output here showing us, hey, this test passed with a green check mark. Now notice these ones didn't fail if they don't, but they didn't pass either. Um, so they, they weren't really counted at all here and that's okay. So this was our first test with this AAA convention. We set up the variables we needed to test. We called the code we're testing and got the current values. And then we asserted, did we get what we expected? Okay, and what's fun here is you can actually debug your test code. So I can debug my test code here and say, okay, let's see what happens. And then if I want to, I can step into, so instead of step over, I can step into the constructor and I can see, oh, hey, constructor, these are the values given for the arguments here. Let's go see what happens inside the code. And that we can just step through just like anything else. You can debug it here. So it's super cool. Uh, oh, not rerun, stop. There we go. I was looking for the wrong button. That you can debug your test code as well. Uh, stop, stop, stop. There we go. So you don't need to test everything here in main necessarily where you might make mistakes. We can make the computer do it. Now, it's, we're not going to be guaranteed that our code will be perfect just because we unit test it here, but we're a lot more likely to be successful if the code is doing what we expect it to do if we've tested it. Okay, and then for testing has arms here, again, we'll follow the arrange, act, and assert. So when I'm arranging here, I'm going to change the value of arms. So I'll have a, um, uh, what do I, uh, we'll just, we probably don't even really need much at all. So if you're not testing the constructor, technically that would go in a range. So I can say, hey, I want a chair, chair equals a new chair. And then I don't care about the color, so I'm going to leave it blank. I do care about whether or not it has arms. So I'm going to start it off as false here. And then I'll say, I don't care about the height or the min or the max either. Those can all be zeros, perfectly fine. No issues there. Then in my act section, I'm going to say chair dot set has arms, true, and then I'll get my actual value out. So a boolean the actual chair has arms is going to be my chair dot has arms, and then in assert I can assert true, assert true, and say okay, uh, the chair has arms, actual chair has arms here. You can say okay that should be true when we're done if we set it to true. We're starting it at false, we're setting it to true, so it should be true, and we can give that one a run. We can run our tests. Now, has arms is, it works. So uh, right click run. Uh, we want to run all the tests here. So if we come up, we can run all the tests with the first, the run chair test here. There we go. Okay, so this one did, did pass because it didn't fail. That's what I was expecting. And it'll even show you about how long it took. So 19 milliseconds, two milliseconds, the constructor sets and gets great. We haven't done the adjust yet. So now one of the ideas with unit testing is this idea of code coverage. 
And code coverage simply means how much of your code was executed when you ran the test. So did this line of code run? 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 So when we look at our validate method, if this is not true, this line of code never runs. And if this is not true, this line of code never runs. So if we want to test and make sure that adjusting our chair height stops at mins and maxes, we need to test both cases here to get 100% code coverage to make sure that every line of code will run. So I'm actually going to have two different ones here. So I'm going to adjust the chair height, actually maybe three, and then we will also test uh, adjusting the chair height over the max, and then we'll adjust the chair height uh, under the min here with three different tests. So we're going to arrange, we're going to act, and we're going to assert, right? Those three things again for each one of these. We'll paste them in here. So what we need then is a chair to work with. So chair, chair equals a new chair. Um, but we probably need to know what we're setting the value to if we're adjusting. Um, so just adjusting it and having it work here. So we'll need a, uh, how about an int for the expected chair height. Uh, we'll say is 30. Why not? So we'll start a chair. We don't care about the color. We don't care if it has arms or not. We can make that false. We'll say the current height maybe is 25, the min is 20, and the max is 30. How about that? Right, uh, let's do max 40, how about 40? Leave ourselves a little bit of room here. So if we start at 25, we wanna get to 30. So in our act here then, we'll take our chair and we'll say adjust chair height by five. And then we'll get an int for the actual chair height, uh, or actual height in centimeters, my chair dot get height in centimeters. Let's see what that value is, and then we can assert if they're equal. So assert equal the expected and the actual. Did it map? So if I started at 25 and I added five more, did I get to 30? Right, just a regular adjusting the chair height. Did that one work? That test passes. Looking good so far. So I'm actually going to copy all of that in here. And so if we go over the max or under the min here, so we should, if we go under the minimum, we should expect to stop at 20 here. So if we take away 100, right, we should stop at 20. And to go over the max, right, if we, we should end at a max of 40 if we try and go up by 100. So we can run our tests. And they all should pass, hopefully. Let's take a peek. There we go. So those are working. So what you might see, right, if we forgot to validate here, if we just adjust chair height and forgot to validate here, if you see the tests fail, you should get a nice big red X. And it'll say, oops, or I guess a yellow orange X here. It expected a 20, it actually was negative 75. For the overmax, it expected a 40, it actually was 125. And you can see, hey, this is where it happened. This was the line here, right? This was the test where it failed, which is really cool. So doing the unit tests allows us to make sure that the code is doing what we expect it to do here. And then we can make the computer check it for us when we run our tests, right? And it's not gonna get bored. It can run it over and over and over and over as we go. So it's writing unit tests for our code to make sure that it does what it's supposed to do without us having to check it in main here. So main is like a poor man's test here. Unit testing is the proper way to go. And then once you have unit tests, what's really cool, you know how we've been committing our code to GitHub. If you have a source control tool like GitHub, you can say, hey, anytime the source code changes, automatically go run the tests. That's known as continuous integration testing. So as code is being integrated into your repositories, the unit tests will run, and there's actually different levels of testing. Go take the software engineering class if you want to know more. But like unit testing is the very lowest level, and you can do integration testing or system testing or end-to-end -end testing, all these sorts of things, um, higher levels of testing. But we can make all of the tests run automatically anytime the code is changed here so that we know our behavior hasn't changed. Because ideally, our software lives for a long time and is used for a long time. And the longer it's out there, the more likely it is we're going to need to change it and tweak it and modify it. So as I'm making changes, I can run my tests to make sure the things that used to work still work and still behave the way they were supposed to as we go and change the behavior of our code, which is fantastic. Uh, so a, a nice rule of thumb is that you get 100% code coverage. It's it's a nice, nice ideal, a nice goal. Now, unfortunately, organizations... Um, are limited in the amount of money and time that they have to spend on projects. Now, I, I would argue that really, if you're if it's worth spending time and money on a software project, it's worth making sure it works. 
right? You're not going to spend the time and money and have it not do what it's supposed to do. So unit testing helps make sure that code behaves as it's supposed to here. But getting to that 100% code coverage where like I have to test this validate three different times here uh, is a little bit tedious, uh, but I think it's useful because it's really easy to like miss these greater than or less thans or swap them or forget your equal signs or do some weird things when we're coding. So writing the unit tests and making sure that it behaves as expected is very useful here. Uh, but ultimately, it's going to come down to whoever's writing your paycheck or signing your paycheck, right? You can go with that organization. So some unit tests are better than none. So if you get most of your code tested, but you can't get to 100% code coverage, you're still way better off than not having any tests at all. Okay. All right, folks, I'll see you in the next video.